Tennessee baseball opens conference play today. Head coach Tony Vitello has the Vols ranked among the top 10 programs in the nation. 10 sports reporter Madison Hawk went one on one with Vitello to learn about the foundation he's laying at Tennessee. In June 2017, the University of Tennessee hired Tony Vitello as head baseball coach. The 38 year old had no head coaching experience and became the youngest head baseball coach in the SEC. Within four seasons, Vitello is now the third winningest coach in program history, and the Vols are ranked among the top 10 programs in the nation. The native of St. Louis was named the National Coach of the Year in 2021 after leading the Vols to their first College World Series since 2005. Following the season, the university and Vitello agreed to a contract extension that makes him one of the highest paid coaches in college baseball. Coach Vitello told me he credits his success at Tennessee to three things, his work ethic, his father, and his loyalty. Make sure you send a message with how you're getting from here to first base, but do it perfect. First and second, nobody out, bunt situation. The average human being, whether it be outside of athletics or inside of athletics, is gonna take shortcuts, isn't maybe gonna do things the right way all the time. So you're in a minority if, if you are one of those guys. So even if you're least skilled, if you know the signs, you show up early, you stay late, they're probably gonna to wanna to keep you around. And even the hardest workers have a line somewhere. Uh, but I think because I was so inexperienced when I first got hired, and then also kind of what I learned from my dad, it was ingrained in me to just go all out. You know, we got up at six o'clock in the morning. We were on the road by 620. We were here usually, you know, sometime about 640. And he would sit in my office and I would go out and work on the baseball field. I coached baseball by myself for a real long time, for probably 30 some odd years. I coached by myself and he was my assistant coach, uh, whether he wanted to be or not. And he was very candid. Um, I mean, because obviously he's got friends on the team, but when a guy can say about his peers, you know, I really don't think that guy can get it done, Dad. Um, and maybe we ought to go this direction, or maybe we ought to do this, or maybe we ought to do that. But again, that's where the coaching thing started. I think he saw what it takes to do this job, um, that there weren't any shortcuts. I remember uh, a conversation with my dad in the basement that was not fun. <laughs> and it was about conversations he had with his dad. I played a little more arrogant uh, than I did hard or, or played uh, the way that he was looking for me to play in a particular Little League game. And uh, yeah. looking back on it, if he was in this room or, again, this was a real bar stool, I'd have the courage to say, what the hell, Dad? This is like a Little League game. Um, but he had high standards. And I think any great coach does. And uh, yeah, it was, it was very firm and it was very aggressive. Again, we're trying to keep it PG-13 <laughs> sitting here, but uh, you know, he, he was not happy with the way I acted on the field. And I made the adjustments the next time out, I can tell you that. <laughs> do you remember that conversation? I sure do. <laughs> Though, even in Little League, there are expectations. There's a certain way to play the game. And you, you must meet those expectations or you're gonna hear it from me. Um, he, we used to play catch and, um, okay, we, will you please get your elbow up and we got to do this and we got to do that. And I used to frustrate the hell out of him and he'd go, I just want to play catch. And I said, well, if we're going to play catch, we're going to play the catch right, the right way or we're not going to play at all. I remember one time he just stormed back into the house because he was so upset with me because he just wanted to play catch. Inside out swing, small ball, and then they're, they're built to play catch like we are. It was uh, leading by example, um, whether he knew it or not with my dad of, you know, if you're the first one there, you, you can get more work done and you're more prepared and your, your day is organized. And, you know, we were often the last ones to leave too. So they were long days, but uh, I, I think it kind of helped forge, you know, how I treat this job here or ones I've had before. I don't like bouncing around at all. My, my dad worked at the same high school for 47 years, and, and I'm Italian, so loyalty is a big time word. And uh, so I want to be loyal to the volunteers, and I, I won't be looking anywhere else to do anything else. And Would you say your loyalty played a part in signing an extension at Tennessee? It definitely did. Tennessee is a place that gave me uh, my first opportunity when a lot of others wouldn't. Um, Tennessee fans came out and created a love affair with this program that helped boost the program in ways that you really can't put on paper. 
Um, and then also the people I work with, um, we're staying together no matter where we go. And it's fun to come to work every day. You guys still use ATMs? There you go, a little rhythm, a little salsa rhythm to it. These guys Not are so still stiff. on the roster that were on the team last year. Not a lot of interest in playing against those guys. I'd rather just play with them and then, you know, Maybe if I'm nice enough to them, I'll get invited to their weddings or whatever it might be down the road. Let's say 20 years from now, people are looking back on Tennessee baseball. What do you hope they say about you and what's the legacy you're hoping to build here? Those kids played hard and uh, that, that's the most important thing. It wasn't being a superstar, getting hits or winning trophies. It was, it was play hard. And so I hope our kids do that on the field and then off the field. They continue to talk about the guys that were in this program off the field uh, were gentlemen and, and on the field, they were the villains. Now, as the balls open SEC play, the hope is the foundation Tony Vitello is building at Tennessee will lead to many more numbers up on this College World Series wall.